In 1973, William Friedkin unleashed his iconic horror film, The Exorcist, upon the masses. Since its release, it has been widely regarded as one of the most influential and iconic horror films of all time and would go on to have a huge cultural impact. It tapped into primal fears and because of its powerful storytelling, it was able to captivate and terrify audiences. I think it's safe to say that this secured its status as a timeless horror classic. But we're not here to discuss a movie that's been dissected, overanalyzed, added to most people's top 4 films on Letterboxd, and reviewed by everyone and their mother. No, in this episode we want to talk about the true sequel to this iconic film, and that sequel is The Exorcist 3. Yeah, you heard that correctly, and I know you're probably asking yourself, why didn't he say The Exorcist 2, which is clearly the next film in the franchise? And we'll talk more about that, but for now, grab your hedge clippers and hold on to your crucifix tight as we revisit The Exorcist 3. Nice hearing from you, Carlos! William Peter Blatty, who wrote the Exorcist novel and screenplay, had no desire to write a sequel. He would eventually come up with a story titled Legion, which was released in 1983. It would involve demonic possession, and it picks up years after the events of the Exorcist and follows the character of Lieutenant William F. Kinderman, a homicide detective in Washington, D.C. Kinderman played a minor role in the film, but was heavily involved in the novel. In the story, he's investigating a series of brutal murders that bear a resemblance to the work of a notorious serial killer named the Gemini Killer, who has been dead for over a decade. As the investigation progresses, Kinderman becomes increasingly convinced that there is a connection between the new murders and the supernatural forces he encountered during the events of The Exorcist. He suspects that the Gemini Killer might be involved in the killings, despite him being dead. The uh, Gemini MO that you heard about is false. And throughout the novel, Blatty delves into themes of faith, redemption, and the nature of evil. He explores the psychological and spiritual battles faced by his characters, creating a tense and thought-provoking narrative. This would become the plot of The Exorcist 3, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. You shut your mouth! In 1977, The Exorcist 2: The Heretic was released in theaters to both critical and commercial failure. It was so bad that the film inspired laughter from the audience at its premiere. William Peter Blatty was one of those audience members who was laughing. It sounds like something out of the producers if you ask me, and I've seen some bad reviews for movies, but never have I ever seen someone give a film zero out of four stars. Legendary critic Gene Siskel declared it, quote, the worst major motion picture I've seen in almost eight years on the job, end quote. Is everything all right in here, guys? We're fine! After Legion was released in 1983, Blatty turned the novel into a screenplay. Film companies Morgan Creek and Carol Co. wanted to make the film, but Blatty decided to go with Morgan Creek. Carol Co. originally wanted to have Reagan McNeil give birth to possessed twins, which completely turned Blatty away from wanting to work with them again. Blatty approached John Carpenter about directing The Exorcist 3, and John loved the script but backed out because of creative differences involving the ending of the movie, as well as Blatty coming around to wanting to direct the feature himself. Per the stipulations of his deal, Blatty would direct it and filming would be on location in Georgetown. Any plans today, Joe? This afternoon I'm at the Flicks. It's a wonderful life. Very nice. Seen it 37 times. That's commendable. You have a favorite picture? The role of Lieutenant Kinderman had to be recast, as Lee J. Cobb, who played the part in the first film, died in 1976. George C. Scott, aka General Patton, signed up for the role and was impressed by the screenplay. Jason Miller reprised his role as Father Damien Karras. If you watch the credits, you'll see he's billed as Patient X. Ed Flanders took on the role as Father Dyer, which was previously played by William O'Malley. Nicole Williamson played Father Mourning, and a younger Scott Wilson dons the role of Dr. Temple. For any fan of The Walking Dead, it is weird to see him clean-shaven instead of the bearded Herschel Green. There's a paper drive. I haven't had a chance yet to read them. I just keep them till I do. 
hate to miss the science articles. They're good. Besides George C. Scott, we also get to see the legendary Brad Dourif don dual roles as the Gemini Killer and James Veneman. I would say he is the true scene stealer of the movie, even though he's only in two scenes, but man are they crucial. He gives a bone chilling performance and even says a line regarding child's play that any Chucky fan will get a kick out of. Did Temple get you out of this cell? Child's play, Lieutenant. In mid-1989, with an $11 million budget, The Exorcist 3 was shot in Georgetown. Production lasted eight weeks. Blatty was able to complete principal photography on time and only slightly went over budget. Four months after production was finished, Morgan Creek informed him that the film had nothing to do with The Exorcist and an exorcism was needed. The production company put up an additional $4 million in post-production to film an effects-heavy exorcism instead of the original talky ending that Blatty shot. In comes Nicole Williams' character, Father Morning, who has added last minute to allow the exorcism to take place. What's more is that Morgan Creek demanded Jason Miller appears as Patient X. The reshoots were expensive and grueling, and Jason Miller's health was also declining, so some of his performance was completed with an uncredited double lookalike with makeup. There's also a scene missing from the refilmed climax that appears in the trailer. It shows Karis slash the Gemini Killer switching through a variety of faces. This was left out because Blatty was not happy with how the special effects looked. Blatty told the press that he was happy to reshoot the film's ending and have the story climax with a frenzy of special effects, but this compromise was forced on by Blatty against his wishes. Bill, now! Shoot now! Kill me now! The Exorcist 3 released in theaters on August 17, 1990. Upon release, the film was distributed by 20th Century Fox and not Warner Brothers, but later Warner Brothers would gain distribution rights back. The film received a mixed response from critics. While some praised its atmospheric tension, psychological horror, and George C. Scott's performance, others criticized its pacing, deviations from the source material, and the inclusion of more traditional horror elements towards the end. The film holds a 56% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes based on reviews from critics. The Exorcist 3 had a moderate box office performance, earning around $26 million domestically. It did not replicate the massive success of the original film, which was one of the highest grossing films at that time. I was signaling beings on Mars. Sometimes they answer. Funny. Despite the mixed initial reception, it has developed a cult following over the years, and fans appreciate its atmospheric dread, psychological approach, and the connections to the original that has gained a reputation as a hidden gem among horror enthusiasts. Over time, a director's cut of the film, closer to William Peter Blatty's original version, was talked about and was titled Legion. It reflects Blatty's original screenplay and directorial intent. Blatty was not satisfied with the changes made to the film during the studio's interference, and it aims to present the story as he originally intended, focusing more on the psychological horror and atmospheric tension. Certain scenes and elements that were added against Blatty's wishes have been removed, including the exorcism scene and a different ending that featured more explicit supernatural elements. The director's cut has received positive feedbacks from some fans and critics who appreciate its closer adherence to Blatty's original intent. In 2016, The Gods at Shout Factory dispensed the Blu-ray of the film with both theatrical and director's cut of the movie. The movie comes packed to the brim with special features involving the making of the film. But in 2023, Shout Factory said, hold my beer, and decided to release a 4K copy of the movie. No new special features were added, just an improved 4K scan of the film, which looks amazing. Is that true? What's the difference? What's that got to do with this? Looking back on this film, it's a worthy follow-up to the original. It doesn't have the same haunting imagery that still sits with me today, but it deserves plenty of praise. George C. Scott's performance is perfect in every way. Now you're standing very close to me, Father. Have you noticed? Yes. I haven't had a bath for three days. I will always have a soft spot for Brad Dorif, but his role here is stupendous. The way he's written and portrays Venom in the Gemini Killer is fantastic. And then, off 
comes the head without spilling one single drop of blood. Now, I call that showmanship, Lieutenant. I'm a big fan of how this film has little callbacks to the first, as well as the 90s one-liners. You wouldn't want to live forever. Yes, I would. No, you wouldn't. you get bored. I have hobbies. It's things like this that make the film stand out and still bring enjoyment to me to this day. Having seen this countless times and always preferring it to the dreaded first sequel that nobody talks about, this movie has Fabio as an angel in it. So what is not to like? That would be in the file. It is not in the file. It is not. That being said, this movie sits at a solid 8 out of 10. Overall, The Exorcist 3 offers a unique and eerie take on the horror genre, incorporating psychological elements and exploring the themes established in the original film. With some great performances and haunting imagery, it may appeal to those of you who enjoy atmospheric horror and thought-provoking storytelling. It's a problem that I'm working on, Father. All this bleeding. 